I'm here with Phil Kopinski, head coach of the Cougar indoor track teams. And today we're talking about the first two meets of the season at uh, Lewis University a week ago, and then just this past Saturday, the private college invitational up at Carthage. And we'll talk about what's ahead for the Cougars for the rest of indoor, and maybe even straight into outdoor a little bit. Um, but um, Phil, uh, looking at the results, um, obviously the first meet at Lewis is a lot of just kind of getting the kinks out and uh, getting used to the um, just the structure, I guess, of a, a track meet, especially for your new kids. Uh, Saturday's results from Carthage definitely look like a, a nice step up from that first meet for a lot of your athletes. Well, it's early in the season. Uh, most of our athletes are still trying to run themselves into shape. And you know, unlike some of our uh, other universities that we compete against that have their own indoor facilities, I mean, we're limited a little bit. So uh, we make do with what we have. We use a lot of those early season meets like we're in right now more for training purposes. So I, I'm happy about the good performances. We don't read too much into the poor performances. Uh, you know, some athletes did more than others over the break like they were supposed to, and, and they get to see the results a little bit quicker. Uh, some of the other athletes uh, will start to see results over the next three or four weeks. Um, you know, I try not to get too high or too low this early in the year because there's really uh, nothing's won in January. So we just take it as a good training and see where it uh, gets us in March. All right. Um, looking at the results, um, it definitely seems like uh, both the men and women have a uh, good amount of depth at the, uh, in the running events, and I noticed in particular uh, the relay events. Uh, you've had the luxury of trying out uh, quite a few different combinations. Mm -hmm. uh, early in the year, we'll ask all of our athletes to run different relays depending on what their you know, event of choice is. Uh, we try to get all of our sprinters into a 4x4. Four four. We'll try to get as many distance runners into a 4x4 four four or a distance medley relay. It kind of feeds into that concept of, uh, it meets early on. I always tell the athletes, they're glorified practices. We're just all wearing the same uniform. So if we can find another event for a Sonia Sorensen or get a Will Serber in something besides the pole vault from the pure conditioning aspect of it, we're going to put our athletes out there. And, and yes, our roster this year is larger than last year uh, by a decent amount. So we can line up two different DMR relays. We can line up three or four different four by four relays. So it's just another opportunity for us to get volume for our athletes and, and to see uh, sometimes you don't always know what you have until you throw it out there. So it's a, a good, uh, call it a test if you want. You know, so me and the other coaches can read the results and figure out who, you know, what students might fit in which events better. One of your uh, women's runners that's off to a good start uh, is our current athlete of the week, Rashada Anderson. We just spoke with her a few minutes ago. But uh, she had uh, two personal bests in the 55 and the 200 dashes. And she was also a part of your uh, four by four relay that uh, scored some points for the Cougars in that uh, Carthage meet. Yeah, Rashada is a gifted athlete. She has a lot of natural talent. Uh, I try to encourage her, and we have a handful of athletes like this. Uh, when I say to them, you know, you can be as good as you want to be. Uh, Rashad, I'm slowly starting to feel the confidence and buy into that a little bit. Very high ceiling for a lot of our athletes. You know, the, the D3 mentality, a lot of times we get a lot of these young athletes who in high school were two or three, four sport athletes on occasion, and they come to college and they start to focus a little bit, and you have to let them sprout, grow, see what they can become, uh, putting their focuses into, you know, a particular event or two instead of spreading it out over a nine-month high school season of four different sports. Uh, Rashada is one that's blossomed from that. I mean, she has some very good natural gifts. Uh, I hope she continues to develop. I hope she continues to want to develop. Uh, I think she's running better than she has the, her previous two years, and we're only a month into the season. All right. Um, Phil, talk about Talk for just a moment about uh, the uh, other groups from your women's side, the jumpers and the throwers. Um, on both sides, I noticed that uh, you have a couple 
uh, key returning athletes back, uh, Angela Hennig among the jumpers, uh, Abby Pierce among the throwers? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we added, like I said, we added some depth this year. Um, obviously, we always like to have as many people that were in the system previously, underclassmen, upperclassmen return and continue on to be good uh, mentors slash role models for the younger kids. Uh, and so far, I think it's working out. You know, I, we can't put, like, once again, you don't put too much credibility in early season performances. Uh, our throwers, uh, we added uh, uh, only one female thrower this year, uh, but she's going to have an impact, uh, Alex Blindauer from Sheboygan. Uh, is coming along well. And with our throwers, we, we don't put a lot of emphasis on results this time of year. It's more about technique. It's more about feeling comfortable with the spin, teaching a new, a new technique. Uh, Coach Volkman does a very good job of making sure they're prepared. And when it's time for them to perform well, they will, um, much like our, our jumpers. Uh, so much time. We don't have our own you know, long jump pit to jump into here on campus. Uh, so you know, we're limited by the amount of exposure and run-throughs that we'll get. So Coach uh, Mack is doing a great job utilizing the time we do have uh, at the local high school that we get to use. And, and I would expect to see continued improvements. And some athletes have already seen huge improvements. Uh, on our men's side, uh, our two triple jumpers are sitting third and fourth in conference right now. And don't take it the wrong way, guys, but you still don't know what you're doing yet. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get better and better every week. Uh, I'd like to see those guys hopefully be two of the top three in the conference. Uh, and our women's jumpers are going to come along. Uh, Angela is going to start to transition more into track shape than volleyball shape. Uh, you know, Lizzie Dongus will run herself into shape. Freshman Otilia Abraham is going to have a huge impact on our jumps. So uh, as we progress, you know, those groups are, are vital to our success. Uh, and we'll continue to try to grow and expand and, and help those athletes reach their potential. All right, Phil, let's, uh, let's talk for just a few minutes about the men's team. Um, and let's, uh, let's start with the uh, reigning men's athlete of the week, and that's Josh Schultz. Um, he broke his own school record uh, actually twice in the 55 hurdles, first in the prelims and then in the uh, finals of the event. Um, and obviously he's going to bring some results for you during the season, but on top of that, also uh, as a senior, he's a, uh, he's a great role model for some of the younger guys on that team. Senior year, and he's another one that could just be as good as, as he's willing to put in the work and effort. And you know, Josh is very in tune with his body, and as he continues to build confidence, I love that he's running this well this early in the year. Um, as he continues to grow, develop, build up some confidence, you know, he, he too could get better. Um, you know, he's got to step a little bit outside of his comfort zone, uh, try a couple new things. Obviously, we've had a little turnover on the coaching staff, and there's some great new ideas being thrown, you know, in, in our athletes' direction. You know, new people bring new ideas. Um, he's been receptive so far. I hope he continues with that, because uh, so far the results have been promising. Uh, and it's always great to have a senior buy into – you know, new hurdles coach, new sprint coach, if he can buy into what's going on, it makes it easier for everybody then to see the results. And, th and that's what we're getting. We're getting that with our jumpers. Josh has seen that. Uh, if our sprinters continue to develop, uh, it's always easier to trust when you see results. All right. And um, let's uh, talk about another Josh for just a moment. Uh, Josh Warren, mm -hmm. uh, also a uh, coming off a great year last year and uh, certainly uh, – Looking forward to, uh, to uh, bigger and better things this year. Yeah, Josh Warren is beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'll, I'll say it, the best athlete, running athlete in this conference. He is amazing. Everything you give him, he handles. Uh, probably the most versatile athlete. I would tell you he's probably the only cross-country runner in our conference that can run a 48-second quarter. Uh, uh, we look for, for him to... Um, accomplish great things over this sophomore year and into next year. Um, a lot of it, you know, Josh is, uh, I mean, you talk about a role model. I mean, this young man commutes all the way from down by uh, Whitney Young High School for 6 a.m. practices, never late, always last one to leave. Uh, that's the kind of guy that you know is destined for greatness because he doesn't ever take a minute off. Uh, his work ethic, his ability, what he's shown us so far in these early meets, uh, I expect another conference championship out of him. 
Uh, the question is, is that uh, how far do we go past that? And hopefully this year we get the opportunity for him to get some experience at the national level. Uh, and then I hope later on, junior, senior year, he can compete at that level. Um, maybe bring home another All-American uh, award for Concordia at some point. That would be, that's easily within his attainable reach if everything goes well. All right, and Phil, a few minutes ago, you uh, mentioned in passing uh, one of the other athletes, Will Serber. Um, he, um, he finished, I believe it was second in the pole vault just this, um, just this uh, past Saturday. And he's another one that, uh, I guess you could say, maybe kind of came out of nowhere last year and uh, put up some good results during the season. And uh, now uh, here he is starting his uh, second year and already a, a big result at Carthage. Yeah, Will is um, the leader of, I'll say, our little pole vault cult. <laughs> we have a handful of athletes, five or six. They hang out together. They talk pole vaulting. They breathe pole vaulting. They work out on, they do extra pole vaulting. Uh, it's kind of a contagious atmosphere that Will brought to that group of let's see how high we can really get. And we knew it, Will was a good athlete. He's fast, he's got some dynamic speed, uh, but those athletes don't always translate that well to pole vault. And, and Will has done a great job. And with Coach Chizzo, uh, our pole vault coach, a uh, great mentor, great leader, great eye for the small detail. I, I think that uh, our man, you know, going from two men pole vaulters last year to five or six this year, uh, gives you know credibility to the program. Guys are starting to choose Concordia because of our, you know, expertise in the pole vault. As long as we can continue to show results, and uh, I think Will is just off the school record, uh, the outdoor school record indoor, uh, but that's another one of those records that we're we like to. Uh, you know, I'd like to quote. Uh, there was a certain coach introduced here in Chicago yesterday. You can't look in the rearview mirror. Always got to be looking out the windshield, and Will's one that looks out the windshield. We're not worried about the school record. Let's get to 15 feet. Let's get to 16 feet and keep looking forward. And he has a, a positive approach, good worker. I hope that uh, the rest of the vaulters, as they progress through, uh, will have the same success Will does. All right. Bonus points for John Fox reference. Yeah, there. you know, I'm a Chicago Bears guy. What do you say? So anybody from the Wisconsin schools in our conference, sorry about your loss over the weekend. <laughs> All right. Uh, finally, Phil. Um, two meets over consecutive weekends, and now with uh, this weekend off before the Cougars uh, get back into action on the uh, final weekend of January, uh, obviously this has got to be some uh, really valuable practice time for all your athletes over the next uh, 11 or 12 days. Yeah, uh, it, this is a key to the training cycle. Uh, we'll use these days to overload them a little bit, push them to their limits, um, you know, try to get everything we can out of them. There's no pressure to perform this weekend, so we can go a little bit harder two or two or three days this week. Um, we'll, we'll continue to keep pushing. You know, like, uh, my firmly believe indoor for us, glorified practices. That's all those meets are. Uh, we, I don't put a whole lot of value in the results. I put a lot of result, a lot of value in the efforts. And if our efforts continue this way. Uh, we're going to have some great results. Uh, we, we have some young athletes that are really dynamic, and our upperclassmen are, are leading a good path, so things are going well. All right, Phil, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time this afternoon and uh, wish you a couple great weeks of practice here and uh, continued best of everything throughout the season. All right, thanks, Jim.